All right, so I've been linked an SCP animated thing. And a lot of people seem to like animated horror stuff. So maybe this will go down well on YouTube. Hey, so what? this is SCP animated Tales from the Foundation. And their most popular one was two weeks ago. Well, they're doing good right now, I guess. So let's watch Origin of SCP-106 SCP Animation. Right, everyone grab their snacks. Wrap up warm. We're going in deep, guys. Nobody could like Corporal Lawrence. That's not to say that nobody tried or that he was somehow unfriendly. Merely that he was one of those few that seemed to be wired differently. However, in the trenches of yeah, you're telling me. Look at this fucking guy's shoulder. World War One. He's got a growth on his back. Normalcy was at best a relative term. Lawrence fought, listened to orders, and didn't. Lawrence did what? Lawrence fought, listened. Sounds to like he says fat. All right, stop. I I'll stop making fun. Okay, come on. Let let let's be serious. Okay, let's dive in. Let's not dissect this. Let's have a good time. And didn't disrupt the other soldiers, and that was all that was required. So what if the people felt increasingly uncomfortable around him, in a place where the baseline of concern was the flesh rotting off your bones while you were still alive? A little personality conflict ranked several levels below a paper cut. So this is what World Lawrence, War One. for his part, dealt with it as he always had. That is to say, remained totally unaware of the avoidance. The same way a man blind from birth cannot mourn the memory of color, Corporal Lawrence couldn't bemoan a lack of company. He was quiet as he had nobody to talk to, and still, as he had nothing to do for long stretches of time. The enemy trench, less than a mile away, had gone silent for several days. Man. This amplified the about, um, unease that seemed to radiate- Guys, sorry to pause here, but you guys should watch a film called 1917. Absolutely fantastic film. Probably one of the best war films I've seen from the way it's done. But yeah, go check it out. Off of Lawrence like heat waves. The worst part was that there was no distinct reason to dislike the corporal. He was a plain man, average height, average build, bland of voice and action. Nobody could recall him raising his voice in joy or anger. He did have the occasional odd mannerisms, however. He tended to stare a beat or two longer than was acceptable at people. Ooh. He rarely slept as well, and bunkmates said he would mumble in his sleep almost constantly. The so content like of me. those nocturnal ramblings, when they could be understood, were often odd and potentially unsettling. Uh, One private moved to another barracks when he heard the name of his daughter pass Corporal Lawrence's lips, followed by a bubbling, muffled giggle. <laughs> it was strongly theorized was really that he muffled. was sent over the trench by his commanders more out of a desire to have him away than for his minimal combat skill. He and 14 of his fellows were sent across the nightmarishly scarred waste of the no man's land between the trenches to scope out the enemy trench and secure it if possible. Damn. Many seem to hope that. that Lawrence would have the opportunity to prove his devotion to his country by making the ultimate sacrifice for it. It was while he was gone that someone started asking questions. Nobody remembered him ever talking of home. No sweet smelling letters came, no soggy dirt street letters left. Questions started to float among even the higher levels of the command. Nobody was able to actually find his station orders. He'd come in with a squad of reinforcements transferred from France, but there was no paperwork. The rest of the hmm. reinforcement squad had never seen the man before he'd been lumped in with them the night before the trip, along with the snips and scraps of other squads decimated this man by the was Germans. An SCP. Whispers filtered among the grunts of the corporal being a curse. What, what is this man doing? What is he doing? Is that meant to be horns? Nearly every man who- Or is he trying to point at something behind them, but they're just not paying attention? ...shared a bunkhouse with him had gotten trench foot, and the rooms he haunted always seemed to smell more musty and sickly sweet, even for the trench. The men sent over the no-man's land with Corporal Lawrence heard and cared for none of this. Just another man among many, all with death certificates awaiting a stamp that could fall at any moment. Damn. They moved fast and low, from crater to crater, slipping over slick mud and barb- Holy shit, why are these guys so big compared to these guys? Did- I, I wasn't aware the French soldiers Wire, had giants. The only thing that seemed to grow in that blasted waste. Oh, they're closer to the- Charging the last idiot. spur and into the trench, they were greeted not with the harsh bark of German orders and rifles, but a dense, closed silence. Preparing for ambush, the men started to filter out into the tunnels and halls of the trench. The men, already nervous, were not calmed by their investigation. The trenches stank of Bendy. mold, sweat, and a thin undercurrent of rotten fruit. 
A vile, cloying slime seemed to have pooled in every divot and crack, sticky as glue and itchy on the flesh. <gasps> Private Dixon found the first body and managed to cry out before vomiting. Damn. They knew it had been a man only because nothing else of that size could have been there. It lay on the floor of a barracks. The entire floor. Wait, what? The flesh of it had been smeared somehow, spread like butter over the rough dirt floor. Bones oh. already looking pitted and rotten stuck out at random angles like dead trees in a still swamp. The skull rested on one of the highest bunks facing the doorway. More remains were found, each seemingly more unsettling and strange than the last. Unfathomable horrors were discovered one uh, after the- But how were you meant to survive? Like, obviously people did survive World War I. But I, I truly believe that it's gotta be the strongest will survived. Because if you're really scared and nervous and you're worried and you're traumatized about everything that's happening around you, you're not gonna last to sit like- You, you know what I mean? You're not gonna last. But- if you're strong-willed, you, you kind of keep your mind in control of your body and stuff, you're more likely to survive. But it's hard, because the war just breaks you down as a, hu a human. That's why you get so much, like, PTSD and stuff. The next, Crazy. sending men retching and running from the trench. Corporal Lawrence was the first to find the hole. It was small, no more than four feet across. It seemed to be the accidental uncovering of a natural chamber. Ah. The empty blackness of it defying investigation. Ah, so they built their trench on top of like Private some kind Dixon, of- recovered and ah! possibly numb from his Dixon! previous ordeals, saw the corporal prod oh, the edge with his boot, then crouch to peer in, then suddenly slide in head first before the private could so much as utter a shout of question. Wasn't there that game where it was like, you're in the trenches? But, like, there were dinosaurs or something like that. That was a weird game. When questioned later, you could provide little illumination as to what happened over the two minutes Corporal Lawrence spent in the hole. You could see nothing. The light of a torch seemingly gobbled up a few feet into that dense blackness. There were sounds, the rustle of movement over loose stone or rubble, an odd liquid shifting, a dry rustle that made him think of insect husks. As he shouted for aid, there was a sudden upwelling of a repulsive stench, and his fellow soldiers found him retching helplessly beside the hole when they came around the turn. It was as they rushed to Private Dixon's aid that the hand emerged from the hole. Ooh. They stopped and raised rifles as one body, roaring for the owner of that pale, trembling hand to identify himself. As they watched, another hand joined the first, okay. followed by the pale, shivering head of Corporal Lawrence. He was streaked and smeared with a tarry black ooze, hacking and coughing thinly as he hauled his body up beside that of the gasping private. As they moved Wait, out, what, what SCP is this? 106? Is this Radical Larry? And the corporal vomited up a heavy stream of the same repulsive slime that coated his body in smears and globs. They were hesitant to touch him, finally doing so after the seemingly endless river of grime stopped pouring from him. He was insensible, eyes rolling and wide, body as limp as a boned fish. The men fled the trench with all the speed they could muster. Half dragging the corporal, they ran with no thought of cover or death, only escape. They crossed in record time, falling into their home trench, gasping and shivering. One man, known to have bludgeoned a German to death with a brick, curled on the floor in a sobbing heap. Yeah, I can imagine. The commanders moved quickly. Dude, they were like 18-year-old ki kids, like, killing each other. And they were only killing each other because they were told to kill each other. It's mental, man. Leading the men and trying to calm the most lucid for a report. What spilled out would have been immediately dismissed as lies and hallucination were it not for the earnest, pleading stares of those reporting. Command calmed them with explanations of battle fatigue and strange gas weapon tests and shared silent, focused stares as the cowed men were ushered out. Corporal Lawrence had little to report. Of his time in the hole, he could That's that f famous photo. Sorry, guys. Give me a sec. This one here. Jesus. That's mad, isn't it? Been some long blocked underground pool or perhaps a buried latrine. Of the sounds and smells reported by the private, he had nothing to say. Only that he had struggled a short time, then managed to get back out just as the men arrived. Truly, he seemed none the worse for wear. In fact, he seemed in better spirits than many had remembered ever seeing him, favoring the commanders with a wide, giddy smile as he was dismissed with a warning not to discuss the events. Not one man from that trench survived the Great War, although few died in battle. 
A wave of sickness took the trench a few days after Private Dixon's death. It seemed to eat the flesh like acid, men waking to find previously healthy flesh eaten down to the bone, oozing and blackened. Corporal Lawrence was remanded to a French mental ward, transferred after several cat, yeah. complaints from the hospital proper where he was first sent. It seemed his behavior hinted at a growing mental imbalance. That's that's where I um that's where I knew where the photo was from because I used that photo in a creepy pasta on my uh, creep source channel uh, for one of the old videos I did. The corporal would ran quietly to the other patients, whispers about endless halls, pursuits in the dark, flesh laid out like pages of a book. It was dismissed as war fatigue. Yeah. He vanished several times from the ward, only to appear several hours later as if nothing had happened. When pressed, he would begin to sing My Bonnie Life. This was when, like, I'm guessing, sorry to keep stopping this, guys, but I'm guessing this is when, like, trauma was properly recorded. Because surely trauma would have been, people would have got trauma in previous battles, like sword fights and stuff. But I'm guessing the difference between that and this is explosions and gunshots and all that stuff affecting the brain. As over the sea in an endless monotone until the doctors left exasperated. A stale, musty foulness seemed to sit in the air wherever he stayed. An incidence of infection and the strange consuming sickness that had beset his home trench seemed to follow him like a cloud. Numerous attempts were made to transfer the man, only to be met with bureaucratic confusion. So, no let me get this straight guys before we continue. Sorry to stop again, but the man who previously was weird and mumbling in his sleep was the man who was dragged into the 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 pit who then came back out is that is that correct okay no records were found of the man no entry papers commendations or incidents not even a birth certificate through it all he sat for hours on end cross-legged on his bed occasionally humming tunelessly or rambling off the names of his wardmates between short bubbling giggles corporal lawrence and 18 men vanished one november night between a five minute nurse rotation at three in the morning the room reeked of rust oil mold and sweet rot thick black swaths of crumbling ooze hygiene wasn't their high point guys walls, for sure wide patches of it smearing and eating into the floor of the men there was no sign at first as they searched one nurse shifted a bed aside only to shriek and nearly trip across one of the sunken reeking depressions on the floor in a tight perfect spiral were what appeared to be hundreds of teeth resting yeah. neatly on the floor after oh. counting, they accounted for the total of all the teeth of every living soul in that ward, Damn. but one. The corporal was never found, nor were the men. He went into his pocket the dimension. The incident was swallowed by the constant barrage of horrors from the front and forgotten with ease. Still they came. Stories of strange deaths, of disappearing men, found days later alive but broken and twisted beyond comprehension. Stories of estranged, dark figures stalking the bomb-riddled towns of Europe. So what caused him to be like that, though? Obviously, it was whatever dragged him into the pit, right? Hang on. Black sludge is what caused it. Where did the black sludge come from? Like, otherworldly stuff. So, basically, the Germans had a trench, and they dug their trench above some kind of alien goo which turns i don't know sends people into a pocket dimension well that was really good i, I enjoyed that i don't want to watch all of these uh, from this channel now i'm gonna I'll, I'll, I'll upload that one to youtube and see how it does and if it like if i can do it if i can carry on doing it then i will carry on watching the videos but yeah it's crazy man